You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy, as always, with my good buddy Dan. Do you, uh, Dan? Do you think we can call this a victory pod, considering the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl? Hell yeah, bro! That was me shooting my guns in the air because that's what people do when we win the Super Bowl. <laughs> You know, bullets come down, by the way. I don't know what we're doing shooting those in the air. That's coming back down. What goes up must come down. Yeah, I had a lot of fireworks. I don't think I heard gunshots around my house specifically, which is nice. Who's to say? Who's but, to say what's what anymore? Yeah, I did uh, <laughs> at one point thought the fireworks were done, took my dog out to go to the bathroom. Nope, neighbor decided it was time for round two. So we take like four steps outside and then <laughs> my dog tried to take yeah. off. So It's so hard to like not go tell them. I know we're celebrating, we're having a good time, but as dog owners, damn it if it's not hard to just go next door and say, hey, fuck off. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you have no idea what you're doing to my household right now, you know? Poor dog. It's yeah. uh, it, it was a fun game to watch, though, man. Patrick Mahomes, sporting Kansas City owner, Super Bowl MVP yeah. times two. Is it? So. Uh, let me just tell you, is it getting fun anymore since we've been in three Super Bowls in the past? Five years or whatever it's been, uh, four four years, uh, five years, three three Super Bowls in the last four years because twenty twenty they won, twenty twenty one they lost, and twenty twenty two and now twenty twenty three. I'm it's just it's one of those things like okay we're just we're supposed to be there and I'm like is this what Patriots fans feel like? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, we're not quite on that level because that was nonstop, but we got to be careful because Mahomes is going to get that Brady goat status. Which comes with a lot of hate as well. It does. Well, it's already coming out of Philly, but you know what? They can go oh, climb yeah. up a street pole or something. Buddy, Philly has had a rough year, man. Yeah. World Series, MLS Cup, and Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, not even one of those could hit for them. <laughs> great. It's, uh, it's, it's a sad time to be a Philly sports fan, but it's a great time to be a Kansas City sports fan. Yeah. So, And especially coming off the heels of KU basketball last year, too, man. It's been like non-stop the future is bright for KC current sporting KC maybe we'll uh we'll break down that future <laughs> well I don't yeah we'll we'll talk about that they put out an interesting video on Monday on their social I don't know if you saw but they're calling it a like a a year of resurgence and they had Nate uh, JD out there who was like doing this hype video and, and whatnot he was like you're gonna want to be there and I think he there said it's a like, renaissance baby <laughs> it's, it's a right. renaissance you know we'll talk about it it all depends on uh you know, maybe a, a, a key position in particular that we'll spend some time talking about today. So, right, we'll see how it is. But hey, chat. Uh, are you going to the the parade? I guess that's today when you're listening. No, bro, I have no time for parades. Y'all want to go have fun? I am the busiest I've ever been in my life, and I'm yeah. like, why do I do two podcasts? I don't know. And I shoot you, <laughs> I shoot you and Chris messages all the time. I'm like, guys, thank you so much for like t- helping out with this, taking the, help taking the lead and stuff. You're about to say, I don't get no messages. What are you talking about? No, you do. You sent me one last week. <laughs> it wasn't last week. I'm all over the place. I'm like, did I send him one? As I'm saying this, I don't remember if I did. <laughs> it's just uh, there's a lot going on, man. So, Hey, it's a busy time. Good stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of crowds. But hey, shout out to you. Maybe you're down there at the parade right now listening to this while you're waiting for Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey's drunk asses to come down on a bus. Is it going to be decent weather on Wednesday? I, I'm seeing a high of uh, 44 with a little snowflake emblem. So hey, snow. Well, it's not going to snow if it's 44. But I'm right now. My my phone is showing a high of 50 and sunny. So I'm I'm on Topeka weather right now. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll see. I think it it might be a, a good weather day for a parade. Now I can't. I'm not going to go down there because <laughs> I don't want to battle that many crowds i don't know if you saw uh our very own ali trost martin who shares the kcsn soccer feed with us uh she tweeted out a video of what it was like driving through downtown kansas city after the win it was just bumper to bumper cars people were honking there was a lady twerking out the passenger side window of the car in the middle of the street i was like this is just mayhem but nobody was climbing poles like they do in philly so listen i left my friend's house not just fine drove home quite safely no traffic it was uh, a great time <laughs> yeah, it was fun good t- good uh, good game to watch uh excited uh what a way to end the season for the chiefs and uh what a way to kick off sporting kansas city season 
Dude, we made some of that vegan queso you love, man. And we heated it up in a little crock pot and used nacho cheese flavored nutritional yeast in there, which okay. before was only regular nutritional yeast. I got to tell you, the nacho cheese changed the game. Game changer. It's insane. It was good before, but now it's great. Because nutritional yeast already has a little bit of a cheesy kind of flavor to it. A little bit, a little cheesy flavor texture going on. You can, yeah. It's very versatile, you know. Yeah. Uh, but this is, uh, man, we had it and I was like, you know, if you guys you don't eat it all, because I like to take some home. <laughs> yeah, we might have to do a a sporting Kansas City tailgate oh, party yeah. at some point and get some Absolutely. of that vegan queso. Maybe even uh, maybe a little tailgate over at the Savannah Bananas. You going to those? I'm not going to those. You're not going to those. You should. I mean, I'm not anti Savannah Bananas, but I just you know, I get, I got too much other stuff going <laughs> going on. Right. Well, so if I have an extra ticket, I guess I won't send an invite your way. Hey, if you want to shoot an extra ticket my way yeah, like, but, uh, well, I didn't say that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, before we talk about Sporting Kansas City if you have not yet left us that 5 star rating and review please go ahead and do so we'll uh, go ahead and read all those reviews on air whether good or bad hopefully good we uh, appreciate all the feedback uh, but let's talk about Sporting Kansas City now there's a, a few things that, that happened since we last recorded uh, the latest switch uh, being Sporting Kansas City and RSL played a preseason game last Wednesday when we released uh, our last episode. Uh, it was a 2-2 draw. It was a, a, a mishmash of people that played. Uh, Johnny Russell scored a free kick goal in the eighth minute that apparently was tucked inside the left post and left the goalkeeper just stranded there. Uh, and then, you know, they got a couple of goals uh, and went up 2-1 to one before the end of the first half. Uh, Damir Krylock got a goal, and then Tate Schmidt got a goal um, off of a giveaway and against the run of play. And then, 54th minute, Mr. William Agata got his head to the ball uh, off a of Johnny Russell corner kick. So it ends 2-2. Hey. Um, again, don't know how much you can take from that, but I do like that Johnny scored. Well, let me ask you this. A couple of ways to look at this. Scored two goals, neither of them from open play. One was from a Johnny Russell free kick. The other one was from a corner kick. So do you like that, or would you like to see goals from open play, or do you not care as long as goals are going in? Uh, well, first of all, I got to say, I like the corner kick action because we don't, we haven't scored on corner kicks in a bit. Yeah. So there's something exciting about that. When you said you scored off a corner kick, it's like, oh, oh, that's juicy. Like it's, it just yep. feels good. Yeah. Uh, but the run of play goals also never really came, uh, that much until Willie Agata came into the team. And, uh, so that's, just, I mean, we, we'd like to see that, but also it's preseason. So I don't really give a shit about any of this. It, it, well, that's true. It is preseason, and, and you know, Eric Tommy's still not playing right now because he's still getting back into full fitness or whatnot. Um, I'm wondering did do say, off-season trainings. Yeah, well, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, it says Russell's corner kick was a low in-swinging corner that flashed dangerously across the six-yard area, and Sporting's 2022 Golden Boot winner, Willie Agata, planted a diving header into the back of the net for his third goal of the preseason. So, I'm like... I know it's just preseason, but Willie Agata, three goals. He seems to be picking up right where he left off at the end of the last regular season. Yeah, I mean, we, we can say we don't really care about these games. These stats don't matter. But if someone gets into the habit of scoring in, in games, meaningful or not, confidence is going to be there, and Willie Agata might just uh, keep it going. Especially since Alan Polito, now he's reportedly going to be back to full training with the team, you know, yesterday uh, or today whenever they go to uh, Arizona but uh you know I it's certainly seeming like to me that Willie Agata is gonna be the guy going into the season can Polito overtake him I think we've had that conversation on here before it depends uh but Willie Agata is certainly making a case for himself to be the guy throughout the season and we also know Peter Vermees is not afraid to to bench more expensive players, more veteran players, keep them as subs if the guy on the field is producing. So if Willie Agata goes into the year, comes out hot, and continues his goal-scoring form, I don't necessarily see him seeding that starting striker position to Alan Polito anytime soon. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, good point, man. Good point. It'll uh, Time will tell, but as of right now, I think that's the, that's the facts. Yeah, so now 
Um, of course, the uh, the bad news that came out of this game, which we didn't know at the time, but if you look at the uh, the 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 lineup that they put out, and they they put out who the subs are and whatnot, uh, most of the starters went a full sixty minutes. Andre Fontes came out in the sixtieth minute and was subbed in for Courtney Ford in the sixtieth minute. And then Courtney Ford was subbed out 13 minutes later, and he was the only person that that happened to. So you see that, and and that's a little concerning. And then sure enough, uh, just um, a couple of days later on on Friday, Sporting Kansas City announced the heartbreaking news uh, that Courtney Ford underwent successful surgery to repair a ruptured Achilles tendon. And it was suffered in the match against RSL, and he is expected mm. to miss the entire 2023 season. That's what an Achilles will do for you. Yeah. So, Dean, what's your uh, your first when you first heard the news? What was your first reaction? Your first thoughts? Uh, first thoughts are we've been talking for a couple years about center backs and issues, and what what the pairing is going to be. What do we have? Are, will more be coming in? Nope, looks like we're stuck with what we got. And that was kind of the case this year. We're like, we don't know who's coming in. So I guess maybe it's Courtney Ford's position and Fontas, but looks like it's probably not. Uh, now you're going to have to put Volader up there and you will have to go get someone. Uh, and I don't know, free agency or some kind of international thing. I don't know what they're going to do. Surely they got some eyes on somebody. Yeah, you would think. I mean, I think we mentioned this last week when we were on the I-80 Sports uh, podcast previewing. The Sporting Kansas City 2023 season, they asked us sort of what position we were, I don't remember if they said most concerned about or or weakness or whatnot. And I think we were both in agreement that the biggest question mark, at least, was center back because Andre Ufantos didn't have the best season last year. He's a couple years removed from his real good season, but we knew he was going to be the anchor of that back line. And I think a lot of us expected Courtney Ford to maybe this be the year that he takes that step and lives up to that potential and he pairs well with Andre Ufantos. Uh, and then this just devastating news. Now, they did announce uh, Friday morning um, before the Courtney Ford news that Chris Rindov, the center back who was the second round pick in the 2023 uh, MLS Super Draft, uh, he did sign a first team contract. So we do have another center back. Now, Daniel Sperry of the Kansas City Star tweeted out that that uh, signing was in motion before the Courtney Ford injury occurred. So this is not necessarily a reaction to the Courtney Ford injury, but we went into um, that Chris Rindov signing with only three center backs active on the senior roster. And now after the Courtney Ford injury, we still have only three center backs that are healthy and active on the senior roster, one of which is a second round draft pick rookie. Uh, another one is a U22 initiative signing who hasn't really lived up to the potential that I think a lot of people hoped for him in Robert Volader. Uh, and then the third one is Andre Fontes, who is coming off a disappointing season. So um, it feels like another signing has to come. It's just a question of when and who. I'm just, I bet, buddy, this is the second year in a row where uh, one or more big injuries have happened to somebody that you anticipated being a pivotal part of this team, a uh, 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 impactful member of this team. And last year, of course, being Gotti Kinda and uh, Alan Polito. So it's just kind of, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not saying like, let's hit the panic button, abandon ship, you know what I mean? But it's like, we should worry a little bit. We should absolutely worry about what that, that center back line is looking like. Yeah. Now, Sporting Kansas City has signed another second round pick defender out of the University of Maryland before where Chris Rindov is from uh, that player is someone by the name of Graham Zusi. so it's worked out before not to put any added pressure mm-hmm. on Mr. Rindov uh, but you know Sporting KC is about to go back to, to Phoenix where they're going to finish out the preseason and then they're going to go straight from Phoenix to Portland uh, for the first game of the year here in short really? order they're not yeah. going to come home between no, they're going to Phoenix, wow. and then they're going right from Phoenix uh, to Portland because um, it's only uh, 10 days from now, uh, a week and a half, really, until the first game of the year. So they're going to go wow. right from Phoenix to Portland. Uh, it is Saturday, Apple TV Plus, man. That's right. It's going to get exciting. Oh, man. So it feels like, as of now, the starting center back pairing 
is Andre Fontes and Robert Volader. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. It's, uh, this is real tough. Uh, it is there, tough. Yeah. There have been plenty of center backs that have been linked to Sporting Kansas City um, over this offseason. None of them have come to fruition yet, but, uh, you know, there's plenty of options. Robert Volader has only played a total of 12 games for Sporting KC. Well, okay, I thought it was my stick. He started seven. Oh, made 12 God. appearances, uh, a total of 716 minutes. So, you know, he, he is... showed good times. I mean, I think he even got a pretty decent goal one time. We're like, what's that about? He's he's not a goal scorer, you know? He did score uh, a goal. Um, Someone's got to step up. That's what this is. We're all professionals. Time to step up. This is a chance. Now, he had some up times, he had some down times. Um, he did make an MLS team of the week last year um, in uh, uh, September after Sporting Kansas City beat three uh, DC United 3-0. So he's had flashes. Uh, this is a real opportunity for him to live up to that U22 initiative signing. Uh, I can tell you that based on the questions that we got from people this week, that this is the main concern is center back. Um Allie, one of our long-time listeners, says, um, are we going to plan a time to sage Courtney Ford? Like do a little uh, um, sort of cleansing sage there to, to try to heal him. Uh, nice. Sean Curry, he's got a spicy take. Spicy he says, how could Sporting Kansas City get to 15 days before the opener and have only three center backs, two of which have played 800 minutes or less last year? One was out of MLS for three years before that, and the other a rookie. They have not had a legit center back pairing all off season. Ford was a squad player. So, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts or reaction to that take? I do, but what's what's incorrect about that? Saying that we don't, have, you know, we only have that many center backs at this point in the season. Like that's, I mean, that's factually correct. I yeah. I don't think it's for a lack of trying. I think sometimes people think like. Snap your fingers. Why don't we have more center backs? Like, why don't we sign it? City has been linked to a number of center backs throughout the offseason. Many of them broke. These, some of them have fallen through. Some of them might still come to fruition. It's like having a, it's like having a buyer for a house. It's not, it's not done until they sign those papers, baby. Right. It's, I don't think Chris Rindov was the only center back signing that was coming even before the Courtney Ford injury. I think this adds more urgency, but uh, I think it's a little unfair to them to say that, you know, how could you do that? I, I, I don't think their plan was, we don't need anybody. I think things sometimes take time. And what we've learned about Peter Vermees in the past, maybe to a fault sometimes, but I, I think more often than not, he shows what he's doing, is he's not going to force an incorrect signing. Sometimes he'll wait to the following window and have to roll with what he's got, but he's not going to sign somebody just to sign somebody because how many times, whether in MLS or in the English Premier League, do you assign someone just to sign somebody or to make a big splash, and yeah. it doesn't end up working out and ends up causing more problems? Best example I can think of, ironically, in recent history, Cristiano Ronaldo with Manchester United. They signed him to sign him, and it didn't work out. kind of caused a lot more problems than than it, it solved. Yeah. I mean, the LA Galaxy has done it many years, signing big names, and it doesn't really work out for the team as a whole, you know? Yeah. Uh, Miami with Blaise Matuidi and to an extent um, Gonzalo Higuain, New York City FC with Frank Lampard and Andrea Perillo. Those didn't really work out. Um, so to sign somebody, just to sign somebody uh, is not Peter Vermees' MO. Um, I also don't know that it's fully fair to Ford to say he was just a squad player. I think there were a lot of people both in uh, Sporting KC circles and across the league that thought this could be a year Ford took a big leap. Uh, he injured his Achilles, which is a different injury than he has battled in the past. This isn't a re-aggravation of his same knee injuries. This, I mean, I haven't seen the play. I don't know, but this sounds like this was kind of a freak Achilles injury. Bad deal, man. Nothing to mess with uh, Achilles injuries. That's terrifying to me. I mean, especially when athleticism is such a big part of your game, like Courtney Ford. I can't imagine. I mean, I know they have great sports medicine and surgery and stuff right, right now but um that's a long and a hard road to recovery i've never torn an achilles i've um inflamed 
my Achilles before, just doing regular running. I, it it um, to the point where it hurt to walk for a number of weeks, um, and I couldn't run for you know a couple of months, and I was on crutches for a little bit, and that wasn't a tear. That was just like huh, something. I injured it in some way. I strained it. I don't remember what the technical term was, and I'm obviously not a world class athlete, but those take a long time to heal. So I just hope that Courtney Ford can come back um, and and sort of reach the level of, of athleticism that he had before the injury. At least they're monitored, right? I feel like I have a million injuries that are just undiagnosed, like a bad ankle <laughs> here, uh, a, a, a torn labrum over here that never healed in the shoulder or something. Like I just, I know that shit's there because I've just curbed pain my entire life because I don't have a freaking orthopedic surgeon on staff right. to tell me that I that I'm not okay, you know, to give me a quick MRI that doesn't cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> if you had the ability to get like a full body scan that would just tell you everything that's wrong with you, would you do it? Hell yeah. And I'd say fix the <laughs> shit. I would. I'd be like, okay, dude, I got a hamstring thing that they told me it's like a fatty change. And I said, Who are you calling fatty? I was I got real upset. But it's like something in my hamstring is just not okay. So I can't open up into like a full sprint at full stride. I had to make these little baby steps so I don't like hurt myself. Yeah. It's messed up. I'm like, you can't do anything. Like get in there, cut me open, seal it up, seal it together. I have uh, a problem in my right knee. It's called plica. Um, it's basically extra tissue in your right knee that if it gets inflamed and swollen, it catches on your joint. And so every time I took a step, it would make an audible click and my knee would feel really tight. I'd just be walking through the house and I'd be like, click. Bernie be like, what is happening? Why you what is happening? You walked. Your man is getting older. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I, it just got inflamed one day after like a three mile run. No big deal. And I had to go to, to physical therapy. Um, they were like, we could fix it. It's going to be surgery and it's not going to be considered medically necessary. So it's not going to be covered by insurance. Uh, and basically we'd be removing extra tissue from your knee. Uh, and you'd probably have to pay thousands of dollars for it, or you can just kind of deal with it. And so that's what I'm doing now. So I'm just kind of dealing with it. That's where I'm at, man, with my arthritis in my hips. They're like, you will need a hip replacement. If you can't, you know, you go until you can't stand it anymore, then it's hip replacement. That's it. So we're just curbing pain. And I'm like, okay, I've, you know, marijuana is legal in Missouri, people. And that's a, <laughs> that's a hell of a pain reliever. I'll just throw yeah. that out right there. But I'll tell you, uh, I'm not going to get a hip replacement at 37 years old. No, absolutely not. Basically, what we're saying is we understand what Patrick Mahomes went through in the Super Bowl when we were playing through his ankle injury. <laughs> we get it. We're elite. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Um, I'm sure they shot him up with all sorts of stuff that we don't have access to. Hey, I've seen Varsity Blues. I know what happens at halftime. <laughs> they shoot up the quarterback with all sorts of shit. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, more questions. Uh, Connor Bateman, one of our longtime listeners, says, with the transfer window closed mostly in Europe now, should Sporting Kansas City offer up in Denbe or Sweat and try and trade for a center back within MLS? We definitely need another center back over having three left backs on the roster. Feel so bad for Ford. He was one of my top guys I was excited to watch this season. Hey, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea, right? I don't think they're getting rid of Ndenbe. I think yeah. they're too invested in him as a potential future option with the U22 initiative. I don't know what kind of value Ben Sweat has. I mean, if you trade him for a center back, I think they're more likely to try to find somebody who's out of contract or a free agent and bring them in. Mm -hmm. um, one point of clarity that I think people get confused at sometimes, just because the transfer window is closed in Europe or in, in any given league, does not mean that that team cannot transfer a player out or loan a player out. What it means is they cannot bring a new player in. So let's say um, they want to do a deal with uh, a Bundesliga 2 team. The transfer window in Germany may be closed, but that doesn't mean that a Bundesliga 2 team could not send a center back to Sporting Kansas City or loan a center back to Sporting Kansas City. It's just they can't bring a player in. That's why you generally see less uh, transactions out because... More often than not, when a, a team sends a player out, they want a replacement to come in. But this could be a good loan opportunity for somebody who wants to, uh, a player to develop and get more playing time. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, just but Patrick Mahomes is an is a, is a international star, right? A lot of people watch the Super Bowl, and people hearing that he is affiliated with Sporting KC, mm -hmm. you know, he's part owner, probably goes to the games and stuff. And yeah, I don't know what kind of perks the players get of Sporting if they get 
occasional tickets to Chiefs games and stuff, but it's certainly attractive to mm-hmm. for you know overseas players. Like, oh yeah, I think I want to Kansas City. Yeah, they just won the Super Bowl. I, I'd like to entertain that idea. Come hang out with the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, it's it's freaking nuts to think about. But I mean, he has this pull, and the man's not even thirty years old for God's sake, and can make make these kind of business deals. It's wild. Yeah. 27 years old, two Super Bowls, two MVPs. We're, just, we're, we're jealous of him and his, his uh, fame, but I'm also jealous he went to Disneyland today. You know, <laughs> <laughs> He was at Disneyland on Monday celebrating with his family. Uh, <laughs> he's got the parade today, downtown Kansas City. Look, after the parade, what's he doing for the next six months? Patrick, let's get on the phones. Let's start recruiting some center backs. Let's start go. recruiting, man. May, you know, get on No Other Pod. Talk about soccer with us. I don't know. Yeah, let's put in that interview request. How's that work? Email Chiefs PR. Hey, I'm sure nobody's asking for him right now, but we'd like to talk soccer with Patrick Mahomes. It's insane. Dude, I thought of a funny freaking thing, by the way, is if, uh, uh, wouldn't it be just freaking hilarious if our producer Jordan or Tucker, whoever, is uh, they just set up some interview that we know nothing about and we're just mid-episode and they pop this person into our show and yeah. boom, you and I just got a freaking pivot, geek out, but just kind of improv shit. Like, oh my God, dude. Yeah, we do have questions for you. How fun does that sound to you? Or does that sound scary? Uh, it sounds fun, except it just depends on who it is. Well, it sounds amazing. Cause I think like he, Jordan was telling us how David Keckner was supposed to be on the uh, Chiefs podcast. And uh, you guys probably know David Keckner, Anchorman, mm-hmm. among many other things. Uh, and... <laughs> He, he didn't show up on time, but he showed up late. How freaking funny would that have been if Jordan just popped him in here to shock soccer? <laughs> we would have been like, what the fuck? It'd be amazing. It'd be amazing. Oh, it's, yeah. It, it, it would be uh, it would be pretty fun. I think I'd be totally thrown off. I'd be like, oh, hey, uh, hello. How are you supposed to be here? If this is the direction you want to go creatively, I, I'm totally on board <laughs> with making this happen because that's freaking hilarious. And my improv brain loves this kind of shit just like catching people off guard kind of like a prank and practical yeah. joker shit you know sounds like it might be good off-season content maybe we keep that in the in the hopper for for next go around in the hopper so all right yeah uh yeah i think patrick mahomes might be a, a little tough to get on this podcast well you probably get jackson mahomes but you know a little different uh <laughs> i don't know that he knows or cares as much about soccer so uh we'll get him we'll get him but anyway, going back to Connor's question, I don't I don't see them necessarily trading Sweat or Ndenbe, but I do think there will be another center back coming in. I really like this loan option. We'll see. Didn't really work with Voinovich. That's kind of what they had to do last year uh, when they got Voinovich in. Um, but who still watches our stories, by the way, on Instagram? I mean, he still was, yeah, best friends, dude. Yeah, we liked. It. He was fun on the podcast. I enjoyed having. It was him. fun. We had a good little back and forth, a, a blossoming relationship. Yeah, it's unfortunate it didn't last because he was going to be our uh, Croatian correspondent for the World Cup. But going to be our guy, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Kev Mendo says, what kind of rotation do you see us going into the season with? Like up top, is it more likely to be Agata slash Afrifa in Portland and bring out Polito on real grass at home instead of the plastic shit up there? Uh, just, again, point of order, Afrifa won't be with the team because he's finishing out his his year at Florida International, so he's not going to join until at least the summer. But so that's so true that I, when you said the name, I was like, "Who the hell is that?" Stephen Afrifa. <laughs> yeah, I know it took me a minute. So, uh, so it'll be a guy definitely, and and then if Polito is somewhat fit, maybe he comes in for ten minutes, fifteen minutes. I yeah. am. We'll see, but it's going to be a guy. A guy is going to be the workhorse for the start of the year, I think. I think so. I mean, the dude came in right away and just showed a willingness to perform, you know? Yeah. Just, I don't know. And just so happy. Gave me, gave me big Latif blessing energy too. Like just, just very excited to be there. Uh, yeah. That's just so cool. And you know, cause of where, where he comes from, man, like, uh, all his friends and family are, you know, over another country for God's sakes, watching him live out this dream. And uh, that's exciting. Well, and, and, you know, you, he came from from playing in Israel, and um, the facilities there are are not going to be the same as they are uh, here in America. I mean, I remember even being surprised when I went uh, to Paris last year, and we went and we toured um, PSG Stadium, 
and as part of the tour, you got to go down into the locker room area or whatnot. I went in there and I was like, I mean, Kansas City's locker room's better than this. Wow. Like this isn't, this isn't anything too crazy. This is just a room with some chairs and some lockers and sportings, honestly, looks nicer. Was it a free tour or did you have to pay money for it? I had to, I had to pay for it. Okay. So you're like, no, they didn't send you to the real one. They sent you to the free locker room that's just the, the pretend one. <laughs> Uh, I just no. I'm just curious for my own nosiness. Like if I ever go, I'm like, are these tours it's something like you can just bucks. sign up for? Yeah, twenty bucks. Yeah, you get a free gift or anything? No, they give you like a little app that you can download and you put in your earbuds and it's like an audio tour and you get a walk around. And you go in the, oh. and go down on the field. Uh, you get Self-guided to go into the stadium. Thing. Yeah, they get a walk through their like trophy uh, area. You get to go up into the press box. Oh. So it's pretty cool. It's worth. That it. is neat. I, I like self guided tours like that. Reminds me of like being at a museum. Looking at Russian czar memorabilia or some shit, <laughs> just listening to something in headphones. Yeah, I would have preferred to actually see a game played there because it would have been fun to see, you know, Neymar and Mbappe and Messi. But it was summertime, right? Well, they were on the road when yeah. we were there. Unfortunately, it was April when we were there. They they could have been playing, but they were they were I think they were in Lille or something like that that week. Gotcha. But and not even Paris FC was playing. I would have gone to see Paris FC. They weren't even playing. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think. Um, the amenities and, and the facilities. I think Peter's, we've talked about this before. Peter said this, like once you can get a player to Kansas City to visit the facilities, you see it on the faces. Of, they just released Tim Leibold, who he saw the facilities for the first time a few days ago. You can see on their face as they're walking around uh, Compass Minerals training facility and Children's Mercy Park. They're like, holy shit, this is this is legit. Yeah, so, it is legit, man. Uh, as fans, we, we underestimate that stuff. I a lot of big time fans have seen these facilities, right? That season ticket members have chosen them as like their perks to like tour the locker room or be down in one of the club seating areas for all you can eat food or whatever. But uh, if you've yet to do something, I think it's worth, I think it's worth it to reach out to your, your rep or whatever, see what you can do to get like a tour. Cause it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Or do the adult yeah. camp. Oh man. Right. You get to swim in the heated pool and then jump into the ice cold pool or vice versa. Yeah. Hell of a time. Or if you buy one of the jerseys that's coming out tomorrow, they're going to announce it tomorrow. By this time next week, we'll know what it looks like. Uh, you can go down to the retail experience they're building at the the training facility for the first time. Wow. So it's going to be kind of cool. Hell yeah. One more question, Daniel Gooden. This is an interesting one. Who is one player you would like to interview that is not on the current roster? So it could be a former sporting player. It doesn't have to be a sporting player. It could just be anybody that, you know, um, that we'd like to interview that um, is not currently on the roster. Someone that we haven't had yet? Probably, yeah. Okay, because immediately I would have gone to Ilya, um, just to have Ilya, back on. Buddy, I miss yeah, you. In a heartbeat, and I think he would, too. I think it'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, but other, other than that, man, I mean... I mean, two that pop into my mind... Benny Fellhaber would be super fun, and Ike Opara would be super fun. It'd be great to have them together. True. Uh, yeah, that'd be tough. Wouldn't get anything done uh, if you had them both on. <laughs> I think Dom Dwyer would be a fun one, too. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe when he retires and can kind of talk about everything a little more candidly and whatnot. Um, just the way that the whole trade situation, sort of how yeah. things went down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That could be a good one. Um, you know what? We, we had Peter Vermees, guys. Like, it's... We don't need. <laughs> it's all downhill from until we get Patrick Holmes. We uh, peaked, man. We it was yeah. We peaked. The uh, the other one that would be fun is uh, Latif Blessing, just because I still want to get to the bottom of the Minnie Mouse Snapchat. You'd love to talk about that. All right. Yeah, I'd show it to him. And be like, do you remember sending this? Did you mean to send this to me? He's so like, I'd be, he's like I, why do you still have this on your phone? <laughs> you didn't. Be, yeah, you're not supposed to save it. I. You screenshot it. You know it tells people you screenshot it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I did the first one too, and he still sent me another one. <laughs> so he knew. He knew what he was getting into. Man, oh man, Scott, uh, that's a great question. It's got me kind of racking my brain a little bit about it. And I'm thinking about other teams, and I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody on these teams. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be from within MLS. If there's if there's somebody who uh, it'd be interesting to talk to. I mean, hey, it'd be fascinating to talk to Gianluca Buzio, figure out how things are going in Italy. No doubt. No so, doubt. That'd be a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, I think someone else, I think an ex-Sporting KC guy, Servando Carrasco, would be fun to talk to 
about yeah. his plane, his plane, and also uh, uh, his wife, Alex Morgan. Yeah, Saran, no. we don't really want to talk about you. We want to talk about your That's... better and more famous wife. Well, I wasn't going to outright <laughs> say that, but you you know, you get there. Yeah, you got to be tactful in how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. <laughs> um, one other story that, that popped up sort of in passing, I guess. This has been sort of hovered around as a rumor for a while. I don't, I don't know if you saw this, but... There have been rumors for a number of months now that uh, Alan Polito might at some point be interested in going back to play in Mexico. Whether Is that coming up again? Uh, he did an interview with 90minutes.com, um, and, and one of the things uh, that was talked about was sort of tangentially this, this report that one day he might want to go back to Liga MX. Let me read you this okay. quote, and I want you to react to it, because I don't think you've heard this, right? You speak Spanish? I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is what he says that possibility is never ruled out of course I really enjoy this league all the infrastructure that the league ma- this league being M- MLS uh, all the infrastructure that the league manages and the quality of life that they show you here in the United States is different but I am never closed to any opportunity of course I also take into account that my career began in Mexico so going back there at any time for my retirement would not be bad for the moment, I am enjoying being in Sporting Kansas City. I want to be the champion of this league, and it is my ultimate dream and the purpose I set for myself. So hopefully, I can achieve it with Sporting KC. So, when you hear that in totality, what's your first reaction? My first reaction is that you're never going to say you're ruling out anything. Uh, you know, it's yeah, doors always open for stuff. You know, it's a it's part of the business part of people's careers mm-hmm. so uh and it's where he's from too dude people always right. end up kind of making their way back home um sometimes you know yeah shit i i moved to chicago for a couple of years and then came on back you know what i mean it happens uh you don't seem like you want to move home you kind of well like you do. i i mean it's a hell of a lot cheaper to live in kansas city than it is la i'm not buying a exactly. house in los angeles chicago and kansas city compare a lot better than kansas city and los angeles so I can do a lot more traveling with my mortgage, the cost that it is here for a fourth of what it would be to rent an apartment in Los Angeles. A full house mortgage for a small ass apartment mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. It's wild. Same yeah. shit was downtown Chicago, man. Same situation. It's wild. Fun time. Um, no, you're right. I think it would be stupid of him to totally slam the door because I also think that's unrealistic. It, it, like, yeah. You can't sit here and say, I'm never going back to Mexico because in all likelihood he might, even if it's right. for a season. And we're always we're always doing updates to see if he and his wife are on good terms. So, uh, you know, sometimes they, I, I got a team of people. I got a team of people that uh, will let me know if they're following each other on Instagram. Sometimes they'll get in a fight and unfollow each other because I don't really stick it to them. everyone knows you un, you unfollow your spouse when you're mad. It's the most twenty twenty three like way of passive aggressively expressing your frustration with your partner. I don't even care that much. I don't even care to do that it's like no i'll just walk to another room for like five minutes and then we'll be fine (laughs) right um he is out of contract after this season 2023 so i think this is something to sort of keep in because technically if there is no new deal agreed to between him and sporting kansas city he can sign a pre-contract six months before his contract with sporting kansas city ends so once we get through june he could feasibly sign a contract with a club in Mexico if he were to so desire. That doesn't mean he will, you know, July 1st sign a new contract with somebody else, but uh, that becomes a more realistic possibility. And I I honestly can't see him and in, in Sporting Kansas City agreeing to a new contract between now and then because I think Sporting Kansas City wants to see, well, how does he respond to the surgery? Is he really going to live up to sort of the potential for the $11 million that we paid. I think when we see him at his best on the field, it's clear that he's the most talented and potentially the best player Sporting Kansas City's ever had. Can he yeah. stay on the field? And if so, now that we have Willie Agata, would Sporting be willing to pay him the whatever it is, $2.5 million that he gets paid per year, or would he have to take a pay cut? Feels like we hardly knew this man as much as he's played for this team. It just doesn't seem like he's... I mean, he's missed more games than he's played, right? Yeah. I mean, since he missed all of last year. True. Just feels feels weird, man. I don't want to say it's time to move on from him, but it's like I hope he I hope he comes back pretty strong and makes a 
makes a case for, you know, MLS accolades and shit. My hope is that, because I don't remember the exact quotes, but I, I, I remember Peter talking about this at various media availabilities, that this surgery that Polito had at the beginning of last year was probably needed ever since he got injured way back when in his first year with Sporting KC when he was away with the Mexican national team. And they pushed it and they drained the knee and they pushed it and they drained the knee and they tried to rehab it and all that. And then finally they got to a point where they were like, no, let's actually do this and let's get him right. Uh, and so he might be healthier than he's really ever been in basically all those appearances he's ever had with sport in Kansas City. And if that's the case and he can live up to that potential, this team could be dangerous on the attack. It should be. Can he do it? Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was his last year with SKC. I think I, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they were able to work out a new deal and bring him back if things go well this year, but this is one to keep an eye on throughout the year because at a certain point where there's smoke, there's fire. And this isn't, you know, other players in the league. Nicholas Ladero, one of the best players, if not the best player to ever play for the Seattle Sounders. Well, probably Clint Dempsey, but one of the best players to ever play for the Seattle Sounders. He's been linked to going back to Argentina like every year for the last two or three years. And at some point, he's probably going to do it. So it's just something yeah. that happens when you're good and you're from another country that you don't want to go home at some point. It happens. And the media... The media drums up shit, dude. The media, like, does their job in making people talk about them. And it ticks me off because Terry Stupid Bradshaw last night, you know, invites Andy Reid, said, hey, waddle on over here. And I'm like, my goodness, you just told him to waddle? And he, okay. well, that's after he called him a big old guy and uh, offered him a cheeseburger. Offered him a cheeseburger. Which we don't know Andy likes cheeseburgers, but I was sure. like, chill. Yeah, hey Derek, I get you a, a wig or something. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we, what are we saying? Why do we do that? And then he said, like, tried to get him to re- say he's retiring. It's like, why would he use this moment right now to say he's retiring? Well, he used some of the post game interviews to say he's not retiring. That's for sure. Exactly. But it's all even if he is retiring, save that shit till at least after the parade. Right. Like, unless you're Chad Henney. Yeah. And you're like Chattany still on the was, field. You're like Instagram. I'm done. Give me out. Give me a Bud Light. It's been a while. It's been a while for Chad. <laughs> Thought we might see Chad last night. It was really like, oh my, we might see some Chad. Oh, but uh, when he just said waddle on over here, I was like, this asshole. Terry Bradshaw is just a joke. Like, how's he still doing this as a job? Because his name's Terry Bradshaw. Exactly. I remember, but, you know. I'd rather listen to Rob Gronkowski talk than Terry Bradshaw. And that's saying something because Rob's kind of an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, man, it's... Uh... This is going to be media. Interesting. That's what media does. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's what media does. Um, this is this is going to be an interesting, interesting year. So um, that's about all of the uh, the sporting Kansas City news that I have. Um, there is one sort of weird development, not weird, a, a development in in a, a story that has been sort of unfolding slowly for Minnesota United that I, I was just going to mention real quick. Have you heard about this with? Um, their star player, Emmanuel Reynoso. Um, he's one of their best players. Uh, he has 16 goals and 28 assists in 71 regular season games since he joined Minnesota from Boca Juniors, one of the best teams in Argentina back in 2020. Um, he is uh, apparently accused of allegedly assaulting a 16-year-old um, in 2021 that involved beating this 16-year-old uh, with a gun and whatnot. Um, he has... It's, it's been rumored that he had court appearances coming up, and now Minnesota United has suspended him for not reporting to preseason uh, training, which it's an interesting way that they put that because I think it's not just like he decided not to go to preseason training. I think he's got these legal things that he's dealing with. But this is a pretty big blow to a team that has been pretty decent the last couple of years in uh, in the Western Conference, and this is one of their designated players, one of their stars, probably his time with Minnesota is done. So um, that's one team that was above Sporting Kansas City last year in the table that you don't really like to see it happen this way. But right. You're like, yes, get him out of here. And you're like, he did what? He did what now? <laughs> right. Right. That's not that's not what what we wanted. Um, right. He had just signed a long term contract extension with. Uh, the team last September that was supposed to keep him with the club through 2026. I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say that's probably not going to happen anymore. Uh, yeah, I think the situation is coming to a head. I bet there's something in the contract that's like, 
if you're a piece of shit, <laughs> it, you got to go. Yeah, that's pro- that's probably true. But so, <laughs> it's uh, it's just something to, to keep an eye on. You know, m- most of the time this year we're seeing new players come in and whatnot. But as we're we're, we're sort of getting ready to look toward uh, the the 2023 regular season. Um, yeah, Minnesota was sixth place in the Western Conference last year, and, and Reynoso was a big reason why. And suddenly, if they don't have him, that's that's probably a, a pretty big drop off for Minnesota, and and that's uh, a team that I could feasibly see Sporting Kansas City hopping over this year in, in that hunt for the playoffs. So, for sure, something interesting to to keep an eye on. Yeah, uh, you got anything else that you want to uh, talk about this time? Nothing we haven't said, man. Pretty sad about this Courtney Ford situation. So keep an eye out. I'm sure something's coming down the road. Olathe Zone, Courtney Ford, man. Yeah, our uh, our thoughts are with him, and and hopefully uh, he will recover fully uh, and as quickly as he can feasibly. Dude can't catch a break. Had some knee problems, then had some accidental, you know, P. What were they called? PED problems. Yeah. And then uh, now this. It's like shit. Yeah. Is he ever going to play a full season? You know, it's maybe next year. I hope so. He's he seems like a real good guy, so yeah. I, I'd like to see him, um, you know, be able to catch a break. He's a friend of the pod, just never been on the pod. Yeah, well, I would love we 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 talked about having him on, and and Allie was able to get him on, and then this happened, so it's probably going to be a little while before no, uh, it would sense to have him on. But maybe as he gets through yeah, his all uh, right. <laughs> No. As he gets through his recovery toward the end there, maybe we can have him on, check in, see how he's doing, see how that recovery's going. But that's about it, man. Um, a week from now, it'll be MLS week one preview time. Holy shit, man. It's this is weird. It doesn't feel <laughs> it doesn't feel like mid Feb right now. It just feels uh No. I don't know. No, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, I have a, a a family memorial service I have to be at next week, so it might be uh, our boy Chris mm. in my place. I know we, we talked about that briefly off air, but just to let you all know, it might it might be Chris and Dan next week doing a little double duty, and then I might have to, to tag in for currently at some point to cover for Chris. But you know. one thing remains the same. It's your Valentine. Dan Couser is on every one of them. <laughs> uh yeah well uh thank you all so much for for listening and uh shout out to the chiefs super bowl champs man that's Jeez. awesome if you're there at the the parade today be safe have fun enjoy the parade don't do anything stupid um but yeah make sure you leave that five star rating and review if you're there at the parade right now and you haven't left a review and you're listening to us kill time leave a review and let us know that you're leaving the review from the parade because i would love to see <laughs> how many of y'all do that um and if not tweet us a picture let us know that you're there yeah, uh, but yeah, make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at no other pod at Dan Couser at JC Max zero three. Shoot us an email. No other pod at Gmail dot com. Check us out on YouTube KCSN soccer. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe uh, to KCSN soccer wherever you get your podcasts. But until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch you all later. See ya. I did this whole show with no pants. Thanks for watching this production of KC Sports Network, the fastest growing sports media network in Kansas City. Check out these videos that feature our team of more than 15 former players, insiders, and analysts bringing you the best Chiefs coverage you can find. Entertain. Educate. Inform. KC Sports Network.